Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Ultimate Jellyfin Guide. Install, configure, and add plugins. Myself, Mohammed Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Well, Jellyfin is a media streaming service that is self-hosted on many different type of devices. And if I talk about the usability point of view, well, Jellyfin has different features and allows you to stream media from a central device to your client devices. And as we can install Jellyfin on a server as well, that is why client devices can also access it. Now, if I talk about the device compatibility for Jellyfin, well, there are many devices that have installation packages available for Jellyfin. For example, we have Docker, we have different Linux servers, we have Linux distributions, we have Windows operating system, etc. So it's all up to you that which, which one you want to go. Other than these, one of favorite devices to run Jellyfin is Synology NAS. As users who own NAS will generally keep their media on that particular server. So for that purpose, Jellyfin is also available and you can download and install it. For this particular video, I'll keep everything simple and I'll show you the simplest of ways that you can use or follow in order to install Jellyfin. And for that purpose, I'll be installing it on Windows operating system. Well, head to your favorite browser and just search for Jellyfin download Windows and hit enter. Here we have the link for Windows operating system. I'll just click on it. From here, we have two options, Windows or Portable. I'll go for the Windows. So just click on downloads and here we'll have all the versions available for Jellyfin file. This is the one that I want. I'll just click on it. Well, basically I have already downloaded it. So that is why I'll just cancel this one. Now let's head to the directory where we have our Jellyfin. Here you can see we have Jellyfin available. I'll just double click on it and let's install it. From here, click on next, agree with the terms, click on next. And this is the directory where it is going to get installed. You can change this directory by just clicking on this browse button. Click on next and it is a data folder that you are going to have. After that, again, click on next. And now you just need to click on this install button and your Jellyfin will get installed into your Windows operating system. So let it get complete and then we'll configure it and we'll see that how we can perform different operations in it. We are done here with the installation of our Jellyfin. Now let's search for Jellyfin into our system. Well, here it is. I'll just click on it and it will start it. After that, go to your system tray, here it is. And from here, we have Jellyfin icon. Right click on it and here, on the start Jellyfin option, it is disabled. It means it is working at the moment. But now we need to open it. To do so, just click on open Jellyfin option and it will open Jellyfin in your browser. Before we move ahead, now I'll show you that how you can download and install Jellyfin in your Synology. Well, you might be wondering that why do we need Synology in here? Well, we do not need Synology. Synology is another platform. I'm just showing you that in case if you want to install your Jellyfin in some third party apps or in some other apps other than your Windows operating system, how can you do so? So Synology is like a server or a storage device that we can use to store our data or content and we can use it for the networking purpose as well. Synology also has a like of operating system in it. And if it has an operating system, it also has applications that we can install in it. So I'll show you now that what if you want to install your Jellyfin into these kinds of applications and platforms and network devices. So for that purpose, I'm going to show you that how you can install Jellyfin into your Synology. So for that purpose, I'll just access my Synology. Here it is. And I'll go to its package center. Now, if I search for Jellyfin and hit enter, you will see that we do not have anything related to Jellyfin. Well, why is that so? Well, it is because that in the default repository, we do not have Jellyfin available for Synology. Now what I'll do, I'll go to Sino community and from there, we'll see that what we can do. If you scroll down under the easy install, here we have a link. You just need to copy this link. I'll just copy that one. I'll go back to my Linux end or my Synology. And this time I'll go to settings from here, click on package sources, click on add. And for the location, paste the link that you have copied. And for the name, I'll go for Sino Community. After that, you just need to click on OK and click on OK one more time. And now you will notice that we have a new tab as community appeared onto our package center. 
Just click on it and here we have new bunch of applications available. Now if I search for Jellyfin, here it is. We do have Jellyfin available now. I'll just click on this install button, click on yes. And now it is downloading Jellyfin for our Synology NAS. From here, it is giving us the caution that this particular application is developed by third party developers. So it is asking for our agreement. Just click on agree and you are good to go. Now click on next and now click on done. Now it has started the installation process for our Jellyfin. We are done with the download and now just accept the license agreement. Click on next and from here select the volume in which you want to install it. I'll go with the default one. Click on next and now just click on done and now it will start the installation process. We have successfully installed our Jellyfin and now I'll just close this one and after that I'll open my control panel. Well by now you know that Jellyfin is a platform that we use to share our media files. Now for that purpose I'll go to my shared folder and in that you can see I have different folders. For Jellyfin in Synology you have to give permission to your folder so that Jellyfin can access them. For example here I have a folder with the name of music I'll just click on it, click on edit and go to its permission section. From here, make sure you go for system internal user. After that, here if you see here we have Jellyfin and FFmpeg. Make sure to give permission for both of these services. Okay, in terms of permission, you have different options, but make sure to go for read only or read write. Well, if you only want your Jellyfin to read these file or to have a look on these file, you can go for read only permission. Or let's say you want to have metadata created so for that purpose, you have to go for read write option. I'll go with this one and now let's just click on the save button. And now it is processing and we are done here. Now I'll just close this one and let's open our Jellyfin. Here it is. I'll just open this one or I'll just click on this one. Here it is. This is how it looks like. This is the one that I have installed onto my Windows operating system and I have already configured it. That is why it is directly asking me for my username and password. But here if you see and when you will install it for the first time, you will see this particular prompt. From here select the language, click on next and then you will have your username. I'll go for my username, set your password. After that I'll confirm my password. From here it is asking us to set up our media libraries. So just click on this plus icon and from here select the content type. For example if you want to go for movies, music, shows, books, photos and you have many other options. Let's go for movies. And after that, this will be the display name. You can change it as well. And to have a directory associated or linked with this one, just click on this plus icon. And here I have two volumes available in my Synology and I have music available in volume one. I'll just click on it, I'll scroll down and here we have our music. And if you remember, this was the one we gave permissions of. So I'll just click on this one and it has been added successfully. Now here it is asking for the shared network folder. Well, you can leave it black as well. And now I'll just click on OK. After that, scroll down. And here we have different settings that we can apply. For example, preferred download language. You can go for different one from here. After that, you have country. And down here, you can go for the option that will prefer to have embedded titles over their file names. Scroll down and you can have more and more option. After that, you are done with everything. Just click on OK. And you will see that now we have successfully created a library for our movies. Now let's go to the Jellyfin that we have installed onto our Windows operating system. I'll just log in into it. After that, I'll give it its password. Now I'll click on sign in. Here it is. And now I'll show you how you can add a new library from my Windows operating system. So I'll just click on this plus icon. For the content type, I'll go for shows. And this is my display name for the folder. I'll go to the directory where I have my folder. I'll go to my D directory. This is a directory in which I have my shows. After that, I'll just click on OK. Scroll down and go for the setting as per your liking. I'm OK with everything. I'll just click on OK. And you can see I have a new directory here with the name of shows. I'll create one more in here. So for that purpose, this time I'll go for movies. For the folder, I'll again go to the D directory. And here I have a folder in which I have a movie. Here it is. I'll just click on this one. Click on OK. Again, click on OK and we have successfully created two of the libraries. Now let's go to our home and here you can see we have two libraries. One is movies and one is shows. Let's open our movies and in movies we have this one available. Let's go back and let's go for the shows. And down here you can see under the latest shows we have media available from the shows library. So this is how you can create different libraries in your Jellyfin. 
Now we can apply different settings on all of them. For example, let's say you do not see any image for this particular movie in here. Just click on this three dot option menu and from here click on edit images. From here click on this search button and now you can search for the image for this particular movie. Just click on this drop down arrow and select the library or dictionary from where you want to search for this particular movie. And after that you will have the images available for you. Just select the one as per your liking and you are good to go. And in case if you want to upload one from your system, just click on this plus sign and go to browse option and go to the directory where you have image available. And then you can apply that image very easily. Other than that, let's see what do we have more. Here we have edit subtitles option. Just click on it and from here you can search for the language as per your liking. Let's say I search for English. After that, just click on this search button and it will look for the subtitles in English for this particular movie. How cool it is. And in case, again, if you want to upload one from your system, click on this plus icon and from here you can upload any subtitles from your machine. Let's go back. Well, let's say your Jellyfin is not showing the complete data from your libraries. For example, in terms of my shows, let's say I had 10 of them, but it is only showing me two of them in here. For that purpose, click on this menu button or more button and then click on refresh metadata. From here, go for this option that says scan for new and updated file. After that, click on refresh and it will refresh your library and it will make sure that it shows you everything that is there in your directory. The next thing that I'm going to discuss is very cool. You might have noticed that on Netflix, we have different sections on the screen. For example, latest, continue watching, popular, etc. For that purpose, go to your dashboard setting. For that purpose, go to your menu and from here, click on this home. For the first one, I'll go for my media. For the second one, let's go for latest media. And for the third one, let's go for continue watching. Okay, I'm okay with these three options. After that, scroll down and have settings as per your liking. I'll just click on this save button and settings have been saved. Now let's go to our home section. And now you can see we have different sections available now. And at the end, let's see how we can add different users for our Jellyfin. Go to your menu again and this time go to dashboard and here we have users. Just click on it, click on this plus icon and give the name to your new user. I'll go for Ali. After that, set the password for this new user. And down here we have two libraries and we can assign any of these to our new user. I'll go for both of these so I'll just click on this option. And now I'll just click on save and this new user have been created successfully. Here we have different settings. For example, in terms of feature access, I'll go for allow TV access, allow live TV recording and then media playback. I have these options and if you scroll down here, it says allow media deletion from. I do not want this user to delete anything from my Jellyfin. So for that purpose, I'll leave everything as it is. I'll not check any option. Then in terms of remote control here, I have different options. And down here we have many other. I'm okay with this one. I'll just click on the save button. And here you can see this new user have been created successfully. And now at the end, let's talk about plugins and how we can install them. Well, go to your menu again and this time go to your dashboard. And if you scroll down, here we have a section that is called as plugins. I'll just click on this one. So here we have different plugins available that we can download and install for our Jellyfin. This is my plugins. It means these are already installed. If you go to catalog, you will have the library of all the available plugins. You can install any one of these as per your liking. And let's say the one that you are looking for is not available in here. You can go for third party as well. So just click on repository and from here you have to create a repository and you are good to go. I'll show you one here. For that purpose, I'll search for Jellyfin plugins repositories. Here we have the link for Reddit. I'll just click on this one. This article have many plugin lists available that you can go for. For example, let's go for Simoni. So for that purpose, I'll just copy this hyperlink. I'll go back. I'll add the URL and for the repository name, I'll just enter the name. After that, click on the save button and this repository have been added into our Jellyfin. Now let's go back to our catalog and now you will see we'll have more plugins available to download and install into our Jellyfin. 
So this is how you can download and install different plugin. And under the metadata here, we have different plugins available and you can use them for anime. So just select any one of them. For example, I'll go for any DB and from here, just click on this install button and this will get installed. And here it says the plugin has been successfully installed. So how easy it is. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope now that you must have liked and loved watching this one. So basically we have talked about that how we can install, how we can configure and how we can have different settings of Jellyfin. And not only that, we have seen that how we can install it on the Windows operating system as well as on Synology. So I hope now that you must have learned a lot of your things. If that is the case, do leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.